Sixth grade, we are on day four of our review. Today we're talking about multiplying decimals. So we got three examples here that we are going to complete. Um, our first problem is 14.2 times 1.8. And when we multiply decimals, what we're gonna do is, we multiply as if these were normal numbers, as if there were no decimal points at all. So for example, I'm gonna imagine this is 142 times 18. I'm not even going to worry about the decimals right now. I'm just going to do that multiplication like we would normally multiply numbers. 8 times 2 is 16, carry my 1. 8 times 4 is 32, plus 1 is 33, carry my 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So that's the first step. Next, I'm going to do the 1 times each thing, but remember you got it at 0 because really this is 10 times each thing. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1. Now I'm going to add these together. I got 6, 5, 5, 2. Now the final step is I've got to figure out where my decimal point goes. And to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to go back to the original problem that had the decimal points, and you're going to count the digits after the decimal points. So I look, 14.2 has one digit after. 1.8 has one digit one digit plus one digit is two digits. So there's two digits after the decimal point in the original problem. That means there needs to be two digits after the decimal point in our answer. So I look here, 25 is gonna be right here because that means I have one, two digits after the decimal point. So my answer is 25 and 56 hundredths, 25.56. And again, our common sense can come into play. If I look at this, this is 14.2, that's about 14. 1.8, that's about 2. 14 times 2 is 28. So I should get an answer somewhere in that range of 28 and 25.56, sure, a little less than 28. So it works. So let's look at our next one. We got 3.05 times 6. So I'm just going to write this as if it's 305 times 6. I am not worrying at all about the decimal points, just going to multiply. 6 times 5 is 30, carry my 3. 6 times 0 is 0, plus 3 is 3. 6 times 3 is 18. So I got 1,830 there, but i got to figure out where my decimal points go. So I'm going to go up to the original problem and figure out how many digits were after the decimal point. So I look, 1, 2. This 0 does count as a digit because it's before another number, so this counts. So that's one, two digits after the decimal point and 3.05. Six has no digits after the decimal point. So that means there's only gonna be two. So in our answer, there's gotta be two digits after the decimal point. So I get 18.30. Now, when I get my final answer there, I'm just gonna give it as 18.3 because anytime you have zeros at the end of a decimal, you don't need them. So instead of 18 and 30 hundredths, my answer is 18 and 3 tenths. Okay, our last one. We got 7.41 times 2.5. So I'm going to write this out as 741 times 25. Again, normal multiplication as if there are no decimal points. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20. Carry my 2. 5 times 7 is 35 plus 2 is 37. Now I'm going to do 2 times each digit, but remember add a 0 because really it's 20 times each digit. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 7 is 14. I'm going to add those together. That's 5, that's 2, that's 5, carry the 1, 8, 1. Finally, I'm going to figure out where my decimal point goes. I go back to the original problem. 1, 2, 3 digits are after the decimal points. So that means my answer has to have 3 digits. I got 18.525, and again, that's another one that makes sense. You can kind of use your common sense here. This is 7.41 is about 7, 2.5, you could say it's about 2, it's about 3. 7 times 3 is 21, but it, we got a little less than 21, which makes sense. If I had gotten 185 as my answer, it wouldn't make sense. Okay, so that was, that was your examples on multiplying decimals. You've got some practice problems to do with an answer key in Google Classroom. After you finish that, you've got some accelerated math objectives assigned for you to do for today. So, good luck.